morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Yesterday, we began studying the law of faith. This is one of the seven primary spiritual laws of the kingdom of God. And so let me give you that list again of these seven primary spiritual laws. One, the law of love, the law of love. Two, the law of faith, the law of faith. Three, the law of the creative power of words, the law of the creative power of words. Four, the law of sowing and reaping, the law of sowing and reaping. Five, the law of authority and dominion to rule in the name of Jesus. The law of authority and dominion to rule in the name of Jesus. Six, the law of wisdom or the law of the wisdom of God. Wisdom, operating in God's wisdom. Seven, the law of obedience. The law of obedience. And so in Romans 3.27, in the King James Version, it says, Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. So here in Romans 3.27, we see that faith is a spiritual law. We need to learn how these laws operate. Because if we don't know how they work, do you realize they can hurt you as much as they can benefit you? Just like the law of electricity. You know, in the natural the law of electricity is one of the laws of physics and electricity is something that can be of great benefit in our lives. It, of course it powers all of our electrical appliances and equipment. However, if you don't understand how that law works and you misuse it, for example, if you stick your finger in an electric socket or touch a live wire, you will be shocked and sometimes even lethally, you can even be killed by electricity. So we see electricity is actually a very good comparison to faith. Because like in the natural, electricity is power. And if you know how to use electricity right, it can power things for you in a positive way. But if you don't know how to use electricity right, it will power things for you in a negative way. I mean, even as as I travel so many times and go to other countries that use different voltage here in the U.S., we use 110 And in other countries, many times it's 220 to 240. And if I try to use a hairdryer that is made for 110 voltage in the 220 voltage, it will burn out the hairdryer. So we see that I've heard this many times using appliances with the wrong voltage of electricity can totally destroy that piece of equipment. And like we already said, It could kill you. So we have to understand that faith works the same way. If you don't understand how faith works, you can be using faith in the negative direction and it will hurt you. It can even kill you if you are using your faith in the negative direction direction. It can kill you. And so we have to understand what faith is and how faith works and how to use it correctly so that we can channel it to do things for us positively, to produce good results for us. So that's why We must study the law of faith. And it's the same with all the other spiritual laws that we've talked about. If you use them wrongly 
or use them in the negative way, they will produce negative results, even up to death. So we must learn how to purposely use these spiritual laws. And I remember hearing a Bible teacher talking about using faith the way a mechanic would know how to use a wrench. In other words, a mechanic knows his tools and he uses them purposely on purpose in a certain way. In the same way, the same way an artist would use a paintbrush. Or even as we were talking about Jesus, when he was a carpenter, knew how to use his carpentry tools productively, skillfully to produce the desired results. We have to understand how to use these spiritual laws purposely with intention. You see, most Christians don't have the understanding that you use these spiritual laws on purpose. Conscious awareness of what you are doing, why you are doing it, and how you are doing it. Putting it to a purposeful intent or intention. That's what we need to learn. We need to learn that each one of these spiritual laws must be picked up and used on purpose with the intention, knowing what you're doing, why you're doing it and how you're doing it. And so it's the same with this spiritual law, the law of faith, as we read in Romans three twenty seven, the law of faith. Now, what we already said is that a law is something that works all the time for everyone Everywhere, a law is something that is constant. That means when we talk about faith is a spiritual law, it is also constant. Get that into your thinking. It is constant, meaning it always works the same way. We always have to do it purposely. And it will always produce the same results every time the same way. Like if you are an electrician and you are wiring a house that's under construction, you know what wires go where, which wires go into the electrical outlet, which goes into the light switch and which goes into the light in the ceiling. And so, you know where they go, And you wire them intentionally. And you know that if the light doesn't come on or if the power doesn't flow the way it's supposed to, you don't sit there and cry, God, why don't you make the lights work? No, you know that there is a problem in the wiring or else the power supply went out completely. But you know there's a problem. You don't go crying to God. God, why don't the lights come on? You know that there is a problem somewhere and you need to fix it. Because you know that if you get the problem fixed, there will always be light. There will always be power flow through those wires if you do it correctly. The same way with plumbing. If you've got a problem in your kitchen sink, the plumber is not going to go look in the bathroom for the problem. He's looking in the wrong place. So we have to understand that God is not the problem. When you don't get your prayers answered, don't say, God, Why don't you heal me? God, why don't you provide my needs? God, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? You've got to understand 
that God is not the problem. You're not crying out, God, why don't you heal me? God, why don't you meet my needs? Because God is not the problem. The problem is some failure in our operation of the spiritual laws. Just like that electrician knows that he's got to go through those wires, look at every connection until he finds his problem. He knows there is a cause for them not working and it's not God. It's because they're not correctly put together. They are not, um, he did not connect them correctly. So in the same way, we need to look at ourselves, not at God, when we don't get an answer to prayer. Let me say that again. That's so important. We need to look at ourselves, not at God, when we don't get an answer to prayer. In other words, we don't say, God, why didn't you? We have to say, God, where did I? I fail in using the spiritual laws. Where was the problem? Where was that catch that stopped the power of God from working? And you see, if we're honest and ask God to show us where we missed it, he will show us. Then we can get the problem fixed and then we can get our answer. But if you're looking at God and saying, God, why didn't you do it? It's like the plumber looking in the bathroom when the problem is in the kitchen sink. You're looking in the wrong place and then you'll never find the problem. If you never find the problem, you can never fix the problem. And if you never fix the problem, then you'll never get the right results. So stop looking at God as your problem and realize that your problem is on your end. It's some failure on your part in using the spiritual laws and ask God in humility to show you where did you miss it? And then God can show you, you can fix it and then it will work. It will work correctly. Praise God. Now, yesterday we also started looking at reasons why we must have faith. You see, we're studying faith now. And the law of faith, and we're going to take it apart. We're going to take it to to take it apart and put it back together again. And so we're looking at it piece by piece. And the first question we ask, why do we need faith? Yesterday, we gave reasons such as the just shall live by faith. It means everything we do every day is by faith. We receive grace by faith. We are saved by faith. We are freed from sin by faith. We are justified by faith. We are made righteous or we receive righteousness by faith. And we draw near to God by faith. Now I want to continue on that list of reasons why we need faith and also things that we receive through faith. So then we also receive what the Bible calls we receive the promise by faith in Romans four sixteen. It says, therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. So it says here, the promise comes by faith. What promise? Well, you can simply say all the promises. It's the promise of salvation. It's the promise of grace, the promise of faith, uh, uh, of, of righteousness. It's also the promise of the Holy Spirit. But it is also every promise that God's word has in it. Every promise is received through, through faith. And then we receive the Holy Spirit by faith in Luke 11 verse 13. It says, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? 
And I'll add on that when you ask in faith. Because a lot of people don't understand faith, they don't receive. So God will give the Holy Spirit when you ask in faith. Galatians 3, 14 says, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Now that, again, that is the promise of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That is also the promise of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it's the promise of the working of the Spirit in our lives. And then we also receive blessing, which is supernatural anointing to increase. That's financial prosperity. That is numerical increase. That is just the anointing of God for increase. We receive the blessing by faith. In Galatians 3, 9, it says, so those who have faith are blessed. Now, the word blessed means anointed to increase and multiply. Anointed to increase and multiply. So those who have faith are blessed, anointed to increase and multiply, along with Abraham, the man of faith. And then also we receive the things that we desire by faith. Now that includes material things. What are things? Things are material. In Mark eleven twenty four, in the King James Version, it says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So whatever things... You desire. Yes, God gives you the desires of your heart. When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So the things you desire are received by faith. Also, we receive healing by faith. There are so many examples of that in the Gospels, in the ministry of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 9, We see the two blind men came to Jesus and asked for healing or for sight. In Matthew 9, 29, Jesus said to the two blind men, according to your faith, will it be done to you? According to your faith, will it be done to you? That was Matthew 9, 29. Now, again, In Mark 5, when Jairus, the synagogue ruler, came and said his daughter was dying and told Jesus, if you come lay your hand on her, she will live. When the bad report came from his house that his daughter was dead, Jesus answered him in Mark 5, 36. Jesus said, don't be afraid, only believe. Don't be afraid, only believe. And again, also in Mark 5, we see the woman with the issue of blood. And she came and she pressed through the crowd. She touched the hem of his garment. And immediately her bleeding stopped. And in Mark 5, 34, Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Notice that Jesus did not say, my faith has healed you. He didn't say it was his faith. He also did not say, my power healed you. My anointing healed you. No, instead he said, daughter, your faith has healed you. And you know, it's the same for each of us today. Also in Mark 10, when we read about blind Bartimaeus, Mark 10, 52, Jesus said to Bartimaeus, go, your faith has healed you. He said the same thing to Bartimaeus as he said to the woman, your faith 
has healed you. Not my faith, not my power. He said, your faith has healed you. Also, in Luke 17, when Jesus cleansed the 10 lepers, one leper came back and said, thank you. In verse 19, Luke 17, 19, Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Now, leprosy is something that eats away body parts. The other nine were cleansed, but this man was made whole. That means I believe that even the missing body parts were restored because he was made whole again. So we see healing is by faith. We receive healing by faith. Even in James 5, 15, it says the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Not only do we receive healing by faith, the Bible says that we stand by faith. Romans 11, 20, Romans eleven twenty says you stand by faith. Second Corinthians 1, 24 says it is by faith you stand firm. It is by faith you stand firm. And Isaiah, Isaiah 7, verse 9 says, if you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. So we stand by faith. Now we're going to go over each of these in greater detail as we go through this study of faith. So I'm just going over this briefly now. But we receive wisdom also by faith. If you need wisdom, if you need answers, don't keep saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What am I going to do? I don't know what to do. Stop that. Stop that. Instead, you must receive wisdom by faith. In James 1, verse 5 and 6, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all, without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Wisdom will be given to him. Verse 6 says, But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. So you see, Stop saying you don't know what to do. Instead, ask God. And when you ask, believe and don't doubt. You say, Father, I ask you to give me wisdom. Show me what to do. I believe I receive wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for showing me what to do. You must receive your wisdom and direction and counsel by faith. Also, we are protected from danger by faith. In Psalm 91, verse 2 It says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Trust is also meaning in whom I have faith. I trust in him. I have faith in him. He is my refuge and my fortress and my deliverer. Hallelujah. Psalm 9710 also says, for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them. Faithful can also be faith filled. Those who have faith, he delivers them. Also, we fulfill our callings by faith. God has a calling for each one of us. And I'm not saying everyone's called to preach. No, we all have different callings according to the gifts given to us. In Romans 12, verse 6, it says, We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. Well, whatever your gift is, use your gift in proportion to your faith. If your gift is encouraging, encourage by faith. If your your gift is preaching, preach by faith. If your gift is teaching, teach by faith. If your gift is you're an artist, then draw by faith. Whatever your gift is, do it by faith. Fulfill your call, your destiny by faith. In John 14, verse 12, I just love this verse. And this is why I've read it so many times. John 14, 12, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I 
have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. So we will fulfill our calling. We will do the works of Jesus by faith. And then we must enter into rest by faith. It says in Hebrews 4, now the promise for entering his rest still stands. And in verse 3, now we who have believed enter that rest. You know, faith is a place of rest. If you're not in rest, if you're anxious or in turmoil or worried, you're not in rest. And then that means you're not in a place of faith, because when you are in faith, you enter into a place of rest, resting in God, knowing that God is working for you on your behalf. You're doing your part And you believe God is doing his part. So I encourage you today, enter into rest, walk by faith, live by faith, do everything you do by faith, go to work by faith, go to school by faith, drive your car by faith, live by faith and enter into the rest of God and in his presence by faith. Now, thank you for joining me today. We are going to continue our study of faith tomorrow. So until tomorrow, remember God loves you. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.